If you're wondering how much it costs to develop, scale, and manufacture a new electronic product, then in this video, I'm gonna break down all of these costs for you. Most entrepreneurs drastically underestimate these costs, and this is one of the main reasons that so many hardware startups ultimately fail. You don't wanna make the fatal mistake of underestimating these costs, or worse yet, not estimating them at all, because in order to succeed all the way to market, it's really necessary to know all of these costs. Without knowing these costs, you'll either run out of money before your product is ready for the market, or you'll find yourself developing a product that can't ever be manufactured and sold at a profit. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip engineer, and I brought my own hardware product to market, which was sold in hundreds of retail stores. And now I help other entrepreneurs bring their new electronic products to market. Okay, let's get started. The first part that we're gonna look at are the development costs. And the development costs for most hardware products are, can be broken down into four categories. You have the electronics, the software, the enclosure and other mechanical parts, and then finally the retail package. So let's start by looking, we're gonna look at the electronics development cost. The electronics will usually be the most complex and expensive part of your product to develop. The, these costs can range from a few thousand dollars for a very simple electronics design, all the way up to hundreds of thousands of dollars for really complex designs. So if you have the skills to do your own electronics design, then that will obviously save you a lot of money. On the other hand, if you outsource the electronics design, just be sure you get independent design reviews to ensure you're getting a quality de design and getting what you paid for. Offshore engineers will always be the cheapest option, and freelancers are always going to be cheaper than design firms. But, you know, be careful because sometimes you, you really do get what you pay for. You can minimize your electronics design cost and lower your risk and future certification costs, which I'll get to in a moment, by using pre-certified modules for any wireless functions or any highly complex functions like, say, a really high-performance microprocessor. The next set of development costs are for the software. Nearly all electronic products, except for maybe a basic power supply, are gonna require some type of software or firmware. In most cases, the cost for the electronics development and the software development will be similar. But obviously, some products may be more hardware complex and some may be more software complex. But in most cases, you're looking at a minimum of at least a few thousand dollars up to tens of thousands of dollars for complex software development. Just like with the electronics, the location of the engineer doing the programming, and whether you hire a freelancer or a firm, these will have the biggest impacts on the cost for developing the software. Next, we're gonna look at the enclosure or the mechanical development cost. Unless your product is gonna be marketed strictly to the DIY maker market, it's gonna require some type of enclosure, which is almost always made out of plastic. You can expect to spend at least several thousand dollars to develop the 3D model for the enclosure. And if appearance and ergonomics are really critical for your product, then the cost to design the 3D model will be significantly higher. Some products may require additional mechanical parts such as stamped metal components or perhaps even moving parts. And this will add additional costs for mechanical engineering and prototyping. Prototyping of the plastic enclosure is most commonly done using 3D printing technology. 3D printing builds a custom shaped part by stacking layers of molten plastic. The popularity of 3D printing has really helped to bring down the cost of creating plastic prototypes. For some startups, purchasing your own 3D printer may be the most cost-effective strategy for doing prototyping of your enclosure. And the fourth development cost that I'm gonna look at are the, is the retail package development. Many hardware entrepreneurs neglect the importance of developing the retail package, and this is a major oversight with serious consequences. Unless you plan to only sell your product online or to industrial customers, then the retail package is just as important as the product itself. And sometimes it may be even more important than the product in regards to how well the product sells. You can have the greatest product in the world, but if your retail pro package doesn't quickly convey this to the customer, it won't sell no matter what. 
Always remember, nothing matters without sales. So be sure to focus some effort in forecasting for the cost to develop the retail package for your product. Now we're going to look at the scaling cost. Finishing the prototype for your product is a major accomplishment, so congratulations, but don't get too excited just yet. It's a huge step to go from a prototype to large volume production. In fact, it's probably one of the most underestimated steps in launching a new physical product. One of the first costs that I'm going to discuss are the certification costs for any electronics or electrical parts of your product. Most entrepreneurs forget to factor in the cost to get their product electrically certified. And certification costs may range from only a few thousand dollars up to as high as maybe $50,000. And it really depends on the product and to a large extent how many wireless features that you have and how those have been implemented. By using a pre-certified module for wireless functions, you can reduce your certification costs by thousands of dollars. Just keep in mind also that certification isn't required until you are ready to begin selling the product. And in many cases, you can even perform small sales tests without the need for certification. The other big scaling cost is the manufacturing setup cost. The transition from prototype to mass manufacturing is a complex process that most people underestimate. But realistically, you can expect it to take about a year to make this transition from prototype to having mass manufacturing set up and running. Having a finished prototype is a long way from having a mass manufactured product. Although the electronics will likely be the most complex part of your product to develop, the plastic enclosure will usually be the most complex part to set up for mass manufacturing. And this is primarily due to the need for high pressure injection molds. The injection molded parts needed for your product the enclosure and the retail package and maybe any other random plastic, custom plastic parts you need. These will likely be one of your biggest costs. Injection molds, especially those used for high volume manufacturing are really expensive. Just about any product will require at least three molds. You'll have for your, your basic enclosure, you'll have the, the front and the back side of your enclosure. Plus, you'll need at least one mold for your retail package to form the, the custom-shaped plastic for the package. However, most of our products are going to require four to six molds, and a large majority of products can't just use uh, just a front side and a back side for the enclosure. They're going to require other custom plastic pieces. So very minimum three molds you're going to need, and more likely probably four to six molds. Mold cost is mostly determined by the hardness of the metal that's used. And keep in mind, the higher the volume that this mold can produce, then the harder the metal that you use to make so it's more durable. So the, the hardness of the metal, the number of cavities, so how many parts it can make in one at one time, and the use of anything which are called these complex aspects of a mold that are called side action. So the hardness of the metal, the number of cavities, and the use of side actions, those are the three criteria that are going to mainly determine the cost for your molds. The high mold cost is mostly due to the fact that the molten plastic is injected over and over extremely high temperatures and pressure, and this means the mold must be incredibly durable, so therefore it makes it more expensive to make. Okay, so now we've looked at the development costs, which are the cost to get to the, the final prototype stage. We've looked at the scaling costs, which are the cost to take it from prototype to manufacturing. And now we're going to look at the third type of cost, and that's the landed production cost. And no doubt about it, the landed production cost is your most important cost. It tells you how much inventory is going to cost, how much you can sell your product for, and how much profit your startup can make. Also, unlike the development and scaling cost, it's a cost that you'll continually face for as long as your company exists. The landed production cost is the total cost to produce and transport a single unit of your product to your warehouse. If you are successful, you will have a very long, intimate relationship with this number because you are always going to be striving to reduce the cost to manufacture your product so that you can ultimately make more money 
and more profit. For most products, you can estimate that your suggested sales price will be about three to five times your landed production cost. Inventory is always one of the biggest costs for hardware companies. Your inventory cost is just your product cost times the quantity. So in order to estimate your inventory cost, you really need to first know your production unit cost. Needless to say, you need to know your landed production cost as soon as possible. There's no point in spending years developing and scaling a product that can't ever be manufactured and sold at a profit. There are lots of separate costs that make up the overall landed production cost for your product. The first cost that we're going to look at is the cost of the electronic components. For electronic products, the cost of the electronic components will likely be the most difficult to accurately determine up front before you finish full development. This is because it takes considerable engineering design work in order to know which components are required for your product. A lot of startups wait until their product is completely designed and prototyped before they even try to determine their component cost and ultimately the production cost for the product. And this is a mistake because you really need to have an estimate of this cost before, I can't stress that enough, before you begin spending tens of thousands of dollars developing the final production version. This can be done with a, only a high level design before you begin design of the full custom schematic circuit diagram. The next cost we're going to look at is the PCB production and assembly cost. First, in the process of manufacturing a, print, a, a finished printed circuit board, first a, a blank printed circuit board is produced, and then all of the electronic components are soldered onto that board. The cost of the blank PCB is mostly determined by its size and the number of routing layers. At a bare minimum, two routing layers, so just a, a top and a bottom, are required for a PCB. However, most designs are going to require four to six layers and really complex designs may require eight layers or more. Increasing the number of layers generally allows you to reduce the overall size of the PCB. The cost to assemble the PCB, which by assemble I mean solder all of the components onto the board, this is called the PCB assembly process. And this cost is primarily determined by the total number of components on the board, the minimum pitch so the, the spacing between the pins on the mainly the microchips and the use of leadless packages so such as a QFN or a BGA package for chips and leadless packages are just microchips where the pins are underneath the plastic so they're they're not accessible uh, so it, it requires a different process and also whether the components are soldered on both sides of the PCB are going to affect the, the total cost for the PCB assembly Keep in mind that the cost to produce your assembled PCB in volume will be many times cheaper than the per unit cost for prototypes. Much of the cost is the initial setup, so as the volume increases, the setup cost becomes minimal. So don't panic if you, if you go to estimate the prototype cost and think that you can never sell your product at a profit based on that cost because this cost is going to drastically go down per board once you wrap ramp up to higher production. Next, we have the cost for any injection molded plastic parts. The cost you'll pay per unit for any production plastic pieces is primarily determined by the weight of the part, the size, the time it takes to mold this part, and the type of plastic used. The size and weight for each piece is dependent upon your design, so there isn't much you can do to control those variables short of making your product smaller or less durable by using thinner plastic, for example. You can eventually increase your production speed and reduce your part cost by using multiple cavity molds. A multi-cavity injection mold allows you to produce multiple copies of your part with a single injection of plastic. But having multiple cavities also significantly increases the mold cost. Increasing the number of mold cavities is usually the best method for reducing the plastic part cost since size, weight, and the type of plastic directly impact the end product. In addition to the cost for the enclosure, you may have costs for other random mechanical parts. For example, some products will require various other parts such as stamped metal pieces, 
springs, gears, screws, motors, etc. And in many cases, stock components can be used, which will eliminate any scaling cost. Next cost we're going to look at is the final product assembly. So we have the PCB assembly, which is just soldering the components onto the board. And now we're going to talk about final product assembly, which is putting all the pieces of your, your final product together. And the cost of this step is almost entirely made up of labor cost. If you're, if you're doing assembly in China, then you'll see this cost will be significantly lower than doing it in the U.S., where labor uh, rates are much higher in the U.S. The next cost that we're going to look at is the testing cost. Once the final product has been assembled, it needs to be tested to confirm it is fully functional and meets all of the quality specifications. Some testing of the electronics may also be done before final assembly so as to prevent wasting the cost of final assembly for a unit that has problem with the electronics. The next cost that we're gonna look at is called the scrap rate. No manufacturing process is ever perfect and you are guaranteed to have some faulty units. Initially, this may be as high as 10% or more but as time goes on and you optimize your manufacturing process, you should be able to reduce this number to maybe one to 3%. The next cost that we're gonna look at, look at that makes up the landed production cost, and that is the cost for the package. Packaging cost depends on whether your product will be selling in retail stores or primarily online. For products sold in retail outlets, having optimal retail packaging is a critical priority, so packaging costs will be significantly higher if you're selling through retail outlets. The packaging costs can be greatly reduced if you plan to only sell your product online or via television or to industrial customers. In these cases, the retail package isn't what sells the product. It's, it's more just serves the purpose of protecting the product, whereas with retail, it best protects the product and it has to sell the product. High-end retail packaging, for example, full-color boxes with custom plastic inserts can be really expensive and may cost as much as $5 to $10 per unit. So in most cases, it's best to start off with a more simple packaging to minimize your cost. And this is one reason it may be best to focus initially on online sales, which don't have such strict packaging requirements. The next cost I want to look at that's part of the landed production cost or Typically, I like to include it as part of the production cost, and other people do, but I've, I've seen it uh, also accounted for outside of the unit cost, and that are returns. So just like you're guaranteed to have some faulty units that must be scrapped, you're also guaranteed to have at least a small percentage of unhappy customers that wish to return their purchase. So be sure to include this in your final production cost. Just as with the scrap rate, your return rate should also decrease as you optimize your product, packaging, and your customer service. Next, we have the freight cost. Most products will ultimately be manufactured in Asia at least once you're, you're up to high production volumes. And this means your finished product will first need to be trucked from the factory to the local seaport in China, then it will be loaded on a cargo boat for shipment to your target country. Then once the boat arrives in your country, you'll need to truck it from the port to your warehouse or directly to your customer. For shipping via truck, it's the weight that primarily determines the shipping cost. And for shipping via boat, it's the volume that determines the cost. And the final cost that we're gonna look at are duties and taxes. Don't forget about the taxes. Both the country of manufacture and the country of import will charge duties, which need to be included in the final production landed cost. Okay, those are all of the costs you need to understand when developing a new electronic hardware product to bring to market. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm John Teal with Predictable Designs, and I hope you have a great day. Hey there, this is John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs. If you enjoyed this video and you want to keep learning more about developing, manufacturing, and selling new hardware products, then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out the websites predictabledesigns.com and thehardwareacademy.com.